Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, 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 Steve Ranazizi. I'm the guy. Bam, ladies and gentlemen, it's What's the Odds with Steve Ranazizi, October 20th, 2022. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm not with the boys. We uh, got to see each other last week. It was beautiful. We three-way tongue kissed um, right after we cut the show out. It was awesome. It was beautiful. And now uh, we are all in our own separate fucking Zooms. So... But we got a lot to get to because this is the glorious, I think it's like three or four weeks, three weeks probably, where all four major North American sports, I don't know, there are other sports now, obviously, but baseball, football, basketball, hockey, those were the four core four for, you know, forever. So they are in season playing right now, whether it be the playoffs or the regular season, it's happening and it's awesome. So, um. We've got a lot to talk about. I want to start with the Yankees. Um, I'm going to try to remain calm. I'm going to try to explain my point of view as clearly as possible. But last time we spoke, uh, the Yankees had just won game one. Garrett Cole pitched a great game one against the Guardians, and now we're off to the races, right? So game two is rained out on Thursday which sucked. You know, it was like, you kind of want to go the way you don't want to have to do four games in a row and that, but that's the way what the schedule said you had to do. So game four, three, two is moved to Friday. Nestor Cortez goes out there, doesn't have his best stuff, but it's a good close game. You lose, which you really don't want to lose at home because now you've given the guardians the home field advantage. And you lose because, let's just say this way, you, we ran out of pitching and we had to bring a starter and you don't know how long these things are going to go. I mean, we've had these marathon games going 15, 18, 17 fucking innings of no scoring, 0-0. Zero, zero. If anybody wants to know why they put the ghost runner in for regular season's games, it's it, this exact reason. Because if you really tied the fucking straps down tight, you could have 17 innings with the way these guys, the bullpens that some of these teams have now, you will have these games that will go on fucking forever. So the ghost runner is a great idea in the regular season, but I agree in the playoffs, you want it the you know old school way. Let's fight it out. So they prepared for that, I guess, by putting in Jameis and Tyone. And I'm going to chalk that loss up to not necessarily the bullpen, but a starter coming in in a position that they don't normally come in at. Great. Now we move to game three. Luis Severino goes out and gets fucking shot up the first two innings. Only miraculously gives up a couple runs. I think it was like two runs. But he had like six hits and two. I mean, it was like every every time he turned around, it was a man on second or third. They sneak their way out of it. He continues on, pitches a hell of a fucking game. We go up two runs. You get to the ninth inning, and you have a situation where you have a two-run lead, and you bring in Clark Schmidt. Now, look, here's the deal. They put him on the roster for the postseason. He didn't pitch that much during the regular season, mostly because for the first half of the year, well, he had some injuries this year, too. But for the first half of the year, we had a lights-out bullpen. We had Michael King, who was an all-star. And we had Clay Holmes, who was untouchable. Next to Diaz with the trumpet fucking guy in, uh, with the Mets, there was no one more, more unhittable than Clay Holmes. So we really didn't need Clark Schmidt. So he hasn't really been in a position where he's had to pitch in a big situation. Well, this is a fucking big situation. Now, I understand you used your guys the night before, and you're going to put your fucking, you know, the line of the sand where, hey, we're not using these guys back-to-back -back days. Well, guess what? Okay, so we're going to put in fucking Clark Schmidt, okay? Okay. Not, not my favorite move, but okay. A lot of trust in a guy that, you know, I don't know if I've, I've seen him earn it, but anyway. Capable pitcher. You know, back of the rotation guys for most teams. But for this situation, not necessarily the guy you expect to see in the baseball game. He goes in, gives up a a, 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 a walk, a hit, a bing, bang, boom. Fucking game's over. We lose. Gave up a three-run fucking, two-run lead, and we lose. In a game His that defense, though, those were blue pits. 
They were not smashes. They were blue pits. But they that's, were fluky. That's what blue happens hits. in the playoffs. They were. I agree. He did not get slammed. He did not get beat up. That was last night. I'll get to that. Don't get me. Don't. And God damn it, Brent. Don't interrupt me. All right. I'm just yeah. trying to defend Clark in his honor. The Schmitz are longtime listeners of this show, and the fact that you're not, you're just glazing over the fact that he wasn't. I follow the man on Instagram. I'm well invested in his life. I want him to succeed, okay? I do. But I was shocked that he was in the game in that situation. Shocked, to be honest with you. So he blows the fucking game. Great. Why what why did we have that? Well, I'm not gonna pitch these guys. Okay, great. Well, now we gotta go win game four. And we go out and we win game four in convincing fashion. Wait, do we win game four in convincing fashion? Hold on. I got I'm so upset by this. Hold on. What day are we on now? Now we're Saturday. S- Wait. Friday, Saturday. Yes. No, that was Saturday. Sunday. Now we gotta win on Sunday, okay? Um, Garrett Cole comes out. No, not that was. I'm so upset. <laughs> Garrett Cole comes out, pitches a great game, gets us exactly what we needed the ace in the hole, the guy that you go, Hey, we got to hand the ball to you twice during a fucking big series. And he did it. He got a lot off his plate because he, I was at the game with Ari last year where he, you know, he lost in, in, Fenway and that fucking sucked because that's what you pay the guy for so he got that off that monkey is off his back then we go out we win game five Nestor Cortez great three on oh, three days rest comes in and a game that we had to win at home again gets pushed back we we, we end up benefiting again because now we could throw Nestor Cortez instead of James and Tyone on so Nestor Cortez on threes and I don't know why the Guardians didn't pitch Shane Bieber on three days rest, but they did it. And uh, I don't know whether it wasn't Quantrill. It was Cervelli or Cavelli or Savali. We lit him up. Gene Carl Stanton did what you have, what, how we're doing it. Two run homers, three run homers, and that's it. And now we got to play the next day straight into the ALCS game one last night. And I understand they're tired and I understand uh, that it's, you know, three games in three different cities in three days. I That sucks. I get all that. But I'm also shocked that some of the people that are still on the goddamn playoff roster, namely Clark Schmidt, okay? They removed Lucky. He didn't get used. But Clark Schmidt's still on the fucking roster. Okay. Then I'm looking at the lineup. No Oswaldo Cabrera. You got Stanton playing left field, which ended up working out, but easily could not have. He made some plays last night where it really sucked. Like that, I was like, oh that, my God. This first I, inning I double. Yeah, that first inning double was interesting seeing how he played the ball. Yeah, not not the best out there. We barely got away with that. Uh we got Verlander on the ropes, but here it comes it comes down to this. Okay. It comes down to a couple of things. I didn't like Connor Falefa being uh Back in the game. I don't like... Look, Matt Carpenter, it's a beautiful fucking story. It really, really is. I'm happy that the man found a swing again, but he has not found it. 0 for 4 with 4 fucking strikeouts. 17 strikeouts as a team. 17 strikeouts. The Astros had 2. That is the difference. We had so many men on base. So many opportunities. So many chances to to blow that game open. Bases loaded, one out, and Donaldson strikes out. Put the fucking ball in play. Were you also frustrated watching, uh, like, Carpenter's bats in particular, the the shift that they had on him? It's like, dude, can't you just take a half step back in the box and try to put it the other way? Because there's no one there for 30 yards. Here's the recipe, dude. That's not the the recipe. That's not the recipe. The recipe is get a guy, get it, maybe get a hit, draw a walk, get on base, and have somebody behind you smash the ball over the fence. I think out ninety percent of the runs we've scored in the six, five, six games we played so far have been via the home run. Ninety, at least ninety percent. So, have your starter go long, 
hopefully hand it off to the back of the bullpen, the three guys that you trust, Peralta, Clay Holmes, and Jonathan Luizaga. And that's it. You're not gonna you're not gonna get the bloop fucking dunk hits that the that the Astros do. You're not gonna get the the you know the ones that, that got Clark Schmidt for, for the Guardians. Those hits, we don't get those fucking hits. We either smash the ball or we kindly walk back sheepishly to the fucking dugout. That's it. That's the team they built. And unfortunately, in the playoffs, it's either working and you're gonna smoke teams or it's hard to put fucking ten, nine, ten innings together. It's hard. I, I I didn't like the choices last night. So now you be, you got Verlander now. But with all this said, you got Verlander now, who didn't pitch unbelievably great the first couple innings. Really, I mean, after Stanton's double, which was fucking great. And second and third, one out. You cannot score a run, dude. Put the ball in play. And so after that, he was like, fuck this, lights out, ba 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 boom. And and we never really had a chance after that. And but we had him one one going into the bottom of the six. And here comes in a big situation, Clark fucking Schmidt again. What does he do against Bregman? Walks the first fucking guy. Great. Okay, tough at tough A B. Guy's one of the better hitters. Doesn't knows the strike zone. It's not going to swing it. But this is the guy you brought in. You didn't bring a guy that can throw the ball in the strike zone and overpower people. You brought in a guy who nibbles at the edges against a fucking hitter who doesn't nibble. This, this, this is the problem. Not just that that he failed in this very similar situation two days before that. But you know what? This time he didn't fail. This time. He somehow or another gets an unbelievable smash hit. We got up everyone positioned well. Double play out of it. Great. Oh, my God. Congratulations, Aaron Boone. Things have turned. You look like a genius. Bottom of the seventh. Who comes walking out of the dugout? Clark fucking Schmidt again. You're doubling down on this guy, dude. You just got two outs from him. What more are you looking for? This guy is a back end of the rotation on a non-playoff team player right now. And you got him in a tie fucking ball game in game one of the ALCS. Trying to nibble on corners until he's got to finally throw one down the middle and then smash job. Smash job. And you give them, now they got six outs with their bullpen at home against us. was it another five you know five to two and what are you gonna do or four to two what are you gonna do four to one now and now Rizzo hits the home run but you know what Stanton before I mean uh, um judge before him here's the only thing I will say the home plate umpire last night was atrocious I I think it's a pretty much unanimous vision of that I don't think that the Astros fans would probably disagree too much with that too he was atrocious he was all it seemed to get bigger as the game went on, almost like he wanted to go home. Like he was like, We will not have one of these fucking marathon games under my watch. So he it, the I mean, there were balls called that ball to judge the first pitch of that eighth inning at bat before Rizzo, the first pitch was six inches below what is called the bottom of the strike zone. So to judge that was barely above his shoelaces, strike one. So look. He gets to three and two. If he somehow another walks and then Rizzo hits a home run, now you're now that changes everything in the ninth inning. Now you just need a fucking mistake or uh, you know some luck. A lot One more run, pressure. A pitch. A lot more pressure on the more Astros. Pressure. So that's the only thing I'll say about the you know things like that can change the the game a little bit. I was wondering but, if you were going to bring up his uh, strike zone. That's it. That's it's pretty it. bad it for the bad whole the game. It, it was bad the whole game. It got worse as it went on because the situation got more stressful. So those things become, but you know what else becomes more um, uh, under the eye and uh, two outs, two out hits. They got two out hits. They had three so- solo home runs. The Yankees had two. All right. You know where they got their fourth run? A two out hit by the nine hitter. We had plenty of those opportunities and they blew them all. So, yeah, 
You can look at the umpire and say that didn't help. Yeah, you can look at the decision-making process as to who's in what situations when, when it means the most. But overall, it's the same thing. We have this problem with this team. They've been there six years in a row. Sometimes you can smash your way past the Astros, but most times you, you can't. You're going to have to nickel and dime them the way they're going to nickel and dime you. They will get a couple home runs, but they will also get two out hits with men in scoring position. Those are back fucking breakers. And even if it's just to tie the game up 1-1, oh, okay, we still got seven innings to get them. Don't worry about it. It, it lives on you later on. Fuck. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and say like, oh, you know, it's all, it's all over. I think we still. This is what you wanted. This, if you're a Yankee fan, you wanted to play the. I mean, nobody, you wanted the Astros not to make the playoffs, but you knew they were going to, and you knew they were going to be good, and you want to beat them. I want to beat the Astros in more than I want to beat anybody else right now. For several, for many different reasons. I don't like their organization. I don't like the fucking vibe. I don't like the fact that they cheated and think it's kind of okay. You know, they took a little slap on the wrist. I don't like the fact that they, you know, I, I respect the fact that they got a great team every year. They put together a great team, but I don't, I want to beat them. There's nothing about that. I'm like, oh, I, you know, I feel bad about beating the Padres in the World Series. And I'll certainly feel bad about beating the Phillies. But I will not feel bad about beating the Astros, and I want to beat the Astros. And I think we can still because we still have our horses coming later on. It's going to be a different timing. Cole and and you know and and Cortez will be three and four. But I like Luis Severino tonight because when this guy is healthy and this guy is pitching well, which he has recently, very recently, he got lit up earlier on the season. But he's got he's got I can throw into the strike zone and still overpower you. Shit, he has that ability. So if he can put it together tonight, I I still we got to just split. We got to split in Houston. Can't go back to oh, it's gonna suck because then you got to win all three games at home. So fingers crossed, everything works out tonight. I'm interested to see. I haven't seen any lineup yet, but I, I'm hoping that there will be some changes. I mean, I'm hoping that well, you got a lefty going tonight for Houston, so no Carpenter tonight. And Josh Donaldson's got to be Harrison Bader's got to be moved up and Josh Donaldson's got to be moved down. If not out. Now the problem you have is you really don't have anyone else to play third base. Unless you want Kiner Falefa in the game, which I don't Not many people do right now. So LeMay who's hurt. That is the big fucking problem too. If LeMay who's here, Donaldson sits down, LeMay who's in the game can play third and we, we got, you know, we're fine, but. Is, you know, these guys that are just not going to be willing to situationally hit, it's tough. So, um, yeah, that's my fucking two cents on that. What do you guys think? Talk. Oh, I thought that was very motivational. And I'm sure when Aaron Boone plays that portion of the podcast in the uh, locker room tonight, the guys are going to be really fired up and the Yankees are going to come out and get you a win. Fair, right? Yeah. I mean, am I being fair? You're being fair. But again, Clark. He doesn't mean what he's saying. You did a great job. You did all you could. But I don't want to see you again <laughs> under any circumstance, really. I mean, if we got like a 9-1 lead and it's the sixth inning and they want to pull somebody, yeah. But you walk a guy, two two men get on, bye-bye. Because it's just, it's not like, I'm not saying, I'm I'm not a, a, a you know an evaluator of overall talent or where someone's going to be end up. Wait, you're not? But I'm, no, and, and no, dude, believe it or not, I'm not. But what I'm saying is I know right now who's hot and who's not. This is not like this is going to be a terrible analogy. Say you went to Vegas and you were going to play blackjack, right? You're like, and you sat down at a table and you lost two hands, but you knew you had a bankroll and you knew you had as much time as you wanted to play, right? Great. Yeah. You wouldn't mind losing two, three hands in a row. You know, overall, over the course – now imagine playing blackjack where you have three dealers to choose from. You've got $50 and when you lose it, you're out or, and you got 10 minutes to make as much, much money as you possibly can go. If you go over to the first guy and you bet $10 and you lose, are you going to go fucking bet with this fucking guy again? I'm going to go try something else because I don't have, I, I don't have the luxury of 
you know, finding if Clark Schmitz can find his inner, you know, out. I got two, I got six outs to work with here. I got to get six fucking outs. Not, uh, I got to worry about so-and-so's thing for next year and his development process. I got to get six fucking outs. Get me an out. Miguel Castro hasn't thrown yet. I trust him. Domingo German hasn't thrown yet. I trust him more. J Domingo German shit, when he's on, is fucking filthy, dude. Filthy. And this guy, if you even if you threw in, say they threw in Wandy Peralta, and you go, oh, shit, he's been used every fucking day. What are they doing, right? I still have more trust in him. And if he blows it, you know what? Then he's got the excuse. Hey, man, you can't use me. All right, great. Then we learned our last. But going with the unknown in the playoffs, it makes it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. Um. So, this is the you know I I, I didn't expect to go in there and and bl you know blow them out last night. I really didn't even expect to win, to be honest with you. But the fact that we were competitive, as as competitive as we were, with almost playing as poorly as we were, with not hitting it. I mean, all you needed is one or two of those fucking two out hits with men in scoring position, and we're fucking in this thing. Even though they struck out 17 fucking times. 17 times. There's 27 outs in baseball. You only made them field the ball 10 times. Altuve made an error in the first inning. Look, I mean, we don't even know what defense is like. We know what we used to know, but we don't know. Altuve, put the fucking ball in play. These guys might fuck it up. You got Yandy Diaz, who's probably worse than Giancarlo, playing left field. Nobody hits the ball to left field. Everybody's trying to smash it over the fucking wall. It, I, I just, you, get, you give a team 17 free fucking outs where they don't even have to, they could be laying on the ground, don't have to take their glove out with them. You know, you're 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 really making things hard on yourselves. So we'll see. Give me contact guys. Give me Oswaldo Cabrera. Give me guys that can get you still need the judge is gonna play, Giancarlo's gonna play, Rizzo's gonna play. They're gonna smash and try to bomb. Great. But give me Harrison Baders and fucking Oswaldo Cabrera. People who are willing to get on base, move men around, put pressure on the fucking defense. Next week, we'll be having Kanye West on. Um, <laughs> Brenton think he has some really great ideas he wants to talk to him about. So that just let's look forward to that. I'm a big week. fan of his merch line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll discuss everything with him uh, and see what he thinks. But that's it for me as far as the Yankees. That's how I feel. And uh, I, you know, I've worked it out in my mind. Um, <laughs> I've had a lot of time to work it out in my mind. <laughs> I've been on a lot of planes recent, like the last week or so. I was, oh, thank you very much to anyone who came to the punchline in Sacramento. I had a great time this weekend. Um, and uh, we had a lot of really fun shows. They were all very different. It was like five really different shows. Great Thursday night show um, with fun crowd work. Great first Friday show it was just like straight down the pocket, old school, just kill him, kill him, kill him. Friday late show, this kid showed up in the front row and he was just a gem, one of those people you can't leave alone. And I did like a 45 minute crowd work show with him. And then Saturdays, both shows were fucking dynamite. So thank you to the punchline folks in Sacramento. Um, it was awesome. And then came back down and Saturday I went, I mean, Sunday actually went with um DT, Dave Taylor, and uh Ryan O'Neill to uh we went to the Rams game. I take that back. You tailgated, went, did you go in? No, we didn't go in because tickets never came down to like, yeah. you know, and I, I was like, we could hear everything. So, but yeah. I watched that game. Uh, I watched that game last night and uh, the stadium, like the bottom bowl, there were huge pockets of empty seats. And I'm, and the ladies, I'm, we're talking, I mean, like, look, we tailgated. We had a great time because we got there like 1030. Um, Dave was in charge because like, I was like, look, I'm coming in from Sacramento. I'm going to grab the car that we'll take. Dave, you grab the food. 
O'Neill, you grab the booze and the charcoal because Taylor's got the grill. We all met at Taylor's house. We go. We get there. We had a great time. We're drinking beers, right? Hanging out, setting up the grill, little charcoal grill. Dave pulls out an eight pack of hot dogs and buns. And then one of those log of meats, you know, like those log yeah. of chop meats. Yeah. And that's it. So, <laughs> I mean, people had the, you know, obviously you guys know because you're Bills fans, people, you know, tailgating is like, you know, a, a religion. Thanksgiving to those spread. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the Rams fans are, it's LA. So it's still, but there are a lot of people, you know, really invested in their, in their, uh, their tailgating. We look like. I mean, we didn't we didn't have chairs really. We had two chairs that O'Neill brought. I was sitting in the back of the car, just hanging out the back. So, uh, yeah, it was really fun. Like we didn't even make like patties. Like you just squeeze the meat onto the grill and then like make like f- just patted it down with the spatula, right? So, game starting. It came. It was great because that's when everybody filed in. Uh, we just hung out, continued to have like laughs and fucking, yeah, you know, we called it tube meat. And then um, we started looking for tickets and I'm like, oh, they're going down. They went down to like $24. I was like, oh, I'll do that. We'll do that. But then with all the fees and taxes and shit, it was like eight, it was like 65 bucks. And I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm like, you know what? Let's go see if the ticket box, like the box, actual box office has any tickets. So we started walking around the stadium and we stopped at each one and they won't even let you into that place. For under 65 bucks. They won't even let you in. And then O'Neill came up with a great idea because if you walk around the whole thing, it kind of looks like a fish, like um, like a print, like a, what's that thing that killed Steve Irwin? Like a those, stingray. Uh, yeah. Stingray, right? It's like it goes, starts at a point and then goes out and like covers the stadium, but it comes to a point. And we got to the end where the point was. And O'Neill's like, that's like eight feet off the ground. And I was like, okay. And he's like, if I got on DT's shoulders right now, I could get onto the point and then literally walk along the top to the stadium, unscrew one of the panels and just drop right in and we're in. And I was like, we are not in, but I would love to see you try. And we literally, it was like, thank God no one was really watching us because we look like like we're surveilling this thing to set up. Like he was trying to figure out every angle. He goes, it's very doable. Absolutely. So in the future... All I'm saying is that in the future, if you hear about some lunatic climbing and trying to make their way into SoFi via the roof, you know exactly who it is. And don't think it's not possible because the same man that's that climbed on the on the inside of the scaffolding from one luxury box to another to get more beer like a Spider-Man. So there it is. But we had a good time. And then we went after that game to a bar in. uh in Los Feliz. What the fuck was that bar? I can't remember. Ye, ye something? Ye. It was like an old bar? bar. I don't know. It was like a sports, old timey sports bar. And then we they watched the afternoon games and I watched the Yankee game on my phone and then took the red eye home from Burbank. But it was awesome. Great trip and great to see you guys as well. So, um, and then uh, what else? We got, let's, you guys took, you guys do football now. Let's, I'll, I'll let you guys talk for a second. Well, the Giants, the Jets and the Bills all have winning records for the first time in who knows how long. It has to be over 300 years. Yeah. Not since it the founding fathers. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, I can't remember the last time that that probably happened. It's ridiculous. So all things are really good in New York right now. Like besides the Mets losing, like people are excited about, you know, that now the Nets suck again. They're back, and the Knicks will probably be competitive. But people are are like so happy, and I'll tell you what: when we get to our picks later on, it's gonna. I got New York biases. Oh week. no! Oh yes, my friend, you're riding a I losing lo- streak now. One game, and it was by three points. And by the way, riding if they didn't give streak. up another point, I would have got a. Fu- <laughs> First, okay, I'm five and one. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, but don't worry. We're going. We're going to run the table the rest of the year. I love the Giants plus three. Give me on the money line this week against Jacksonville, no. and give oh, me the no. goddamn it's Jets trap. over Denver. No, Fuck you oh Fuck you no, it's a trap. oh bullshit. No. The Jets aren't great, but I'll tell you what. Here's what I know: Russell Wilson sucks dick. That's what I know. Russell Wilson is the guy you, oh, I'm Tom Brady, Tom Brady. Fuck the Tom Brady. To quote Brian Holtzman, 
fuck a Tom Brady. <laughs> it's Russell Wilson you should be worried about, dude. This guy is garbage. Uh, I would, I would not fully disagree, but I think the coaching in that game was some of the worst coaching I've ever seen. Uh, I don't want to hear it, dude. You're a it's, veteran that's won Super it. Bowls. It's hacking. Either you fix it and tell the coach we got to fix it. Hey, bro, who do you think people are more invested in this fucking city? Me or you? I'm calling the plays. I'm calling the fucking shots. I got the big dick in the room. It's Hackett that's calling the plays. And well, that's the problem then. I don't give it's a fuck. If I'm Russell who Wilson, decided, I'm the one going it's out Hackett there every week. who decided to bench Melvin Gordon for whatever reason to put in Latavius Murray that you signed 11 days ago and give him the full run. Not even Mike Boone who's been there, but give Latavius Fuck Murray the full run. Too. And then you're going to use the excuse that, that Russell Wilson hurt his hamstring, but in the fourth quarter – Three out of four plays were quarterback draws. Like something's going on. He needs to just hand the reins to someone else, or like you said, let Russell call his own plays because it's it's not fucking working in Denver. And you have Jerry Judy and you have Cortland Sutton against a team whose weakness is their secondary, and, and you're not throwing them the ball? Throw them the fucking ball! You paid them all that money. You drafted them with high draft picks. Throw them the ball. What is happening? Throw he, the fucking he, ball. Albert O was inactive, and you're trying to force all of these backup tight ends into premier roles. Now people are going to be like, oh, but uh, Dolchich, he caught a touchdown. He looked good. No, it was broken coverage. There was no one near him for 30 yards. I, I, Brenton, I, every week they're putting this fucking team on national television. It's just the <laughs> and worst. It's a goddamn. Game it's like plan watching every Dahmer. Week. This guy needs to be fired immediately. Oh, Dahmer's way better than the Broncos. It is way better than the Broncos, but it's l- w- less disturbing. <laughs> it's less disturbing than what I'm watching for the Broncos. Who are their offensive coordinators? Ben McAdoo, Judge? It's it's Hackett it? that's calling the plays. It, do- it Bro, I have a good buddy that's a Broncos fan. I haven't spoken to him in three weeks. I don't even know if he's alive. <laughs> can, it's, can, and, 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 and as someone who's invested all of their – fantasy football equity and <laughs> their youngest sons as well in oh, the Russell boy. Wilson basket. It is. I mean, I, I'm well, starting. I, look, man, I, I would, Daniel I Jones? would at least, I, well, that's not bad. He's been, he's been playing solid and Dable's got a good system and he can run the Nothing ball, is worse. But, but I would give it this week. Let's see how he looks against the jets. I think this is a week that they come I'll back. I'll tell you how he's going to look, Brenton. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Here's a hot take. Sauce Gardner has at least one pick, and he has at least two picks because he's going to get pressured, and he's going to try to be a hero. And he does get happy, Pete. That is an issue. He, anytime it's the pocket problem, dude. breaks he's even a little, he's fuck, getting dude. happy, Pete. It's over, dude. I'm taking the Jets, too. Listen, Come to me, people. Listen to me. I will not lead you astray. Uh, it is not New I, York I don't like. I don't like the Jersey teams this week. You literally started this rant by saying this is my New York bias. I think I also told you to talk. Sorry. <laughs> I'm with Steve uh, on just, this. You know what? You guys you guys were with Steve on this last week when I told you to bet against Tom Brady again. And you know what? I made a side bet, and I made a good chunk of money betting against Tom Brady. And I know we recorded on a Wednesday. We didn't record on a Friday. If we had recorded on a Friday and I told you Tom Brady's missing practice because he's at a wedding – would you bet against Tom Brady then? Because he he missed. He missed practice, and he went to a wedding. And you know who didn't go to a wedding? Bill Belichick. It was his owner's team. He was getting married. Belichick said, no, I'm sorry. I, I wish you the best, but I have a game on Sunday. Tom Brady was like, fuck it. I don't care anymore. Bet against Tom Brady. He looked like garbage, yeah. and he's yelling at his linemen on the sideline. Like, dude, it's, yeah. it's not them. It's you. You're overthrowing people. You're bouncing balls into your running back. You're playing yeah. the Steelers secondary. Everybody's injured. You have more, all your more, weapons back. More disappointing team. And be honest. And not just d- try to holster your vitriol against fucking Tom Brady for a second. Tom Brady and the Bucks, or Aaron Rodgers and the Packers? Aaron Rodgers you could kind of see coming because it's just his attitude has always been about himself. And whenever he's he's a guy that if he gets hit hard in the chin in the first half, he's going to just shut off in the second half. And we've seen I'm that talking about years. more disappointing right now. Like this is the most like, well, I, I, I think it's got to be the Packers. All you heard about is the for Packers me personally, defense. 
oh, if, they, if he can get some receiving, you know, um, chemistry together. They're gonna be, they have a shitty defense. Couldn't stop the Giants or the fucking Jets. Yeah. Oh, he's, you know, Aaron Rodgers got to, you know, he'll find the receiver. The receivers suck. The offense sucks. Everything's the special teams sucks. They got a kick blocked punt blocked field goal. Where is this fucking Packers team? Another no show. And they, look, if anybody, I believe in him getting shit together and sneaking into the playoffs over Tom Brady. I think I I don't I do not think they make the playoffs. I really don't. I mean, they are in a shitty division. Atlanta's not great. New Orleans isn't great. Panthers are terrible. The Panthers are terrible. So I mean, by default, they should be running away with this thing. And it, I, you look at it, three and three. You get the standings in the NFL right now. Besides the NFC East, which is unbelievable to me. Three and three, 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 three and three. Oh, Atlanta Bills, should be five. And Atlanta three. should be four and two. Let's put that out there. They should I got have won more that game. faith in Atlanta than I do in either one of those two teams. They've been surprising. And I, you know how many Atlanta games I've watched so far? Zero. Well, they look great against I watched San Francisco. Highlights. That was uh, that was another bet I made on the side uh, without you guys, and uh, I was happy Stop I did. Stop with your con side bets, please. Okay. I'm you, sorry. You I gotta. I gotta own, make. I gotta make my money back. Save that for your own podcast, your <laughs> offshoot podcast. Okay. I don't want to hear about your side bets anymore. You can. Uh, to, you can get bet, the, what bet against Brady on my Patreon page. Uh, we just talk about how bad Brady is and why we're going to make a lot of money this year off of the back of Tom Brady losing games and throwing tablets. Who do you think retires first now, Rodgers or Brady? It's Brady. As I said, he's he's not going to make it through the whole season. Um, The guy can't even make it through a week of practice without having to leave the team. I think it's going to be Rodgers, to be honest with you. I think Rodgers has got Rogers, to walk away. I mean, yeah, he's probably Rogers walked signed away his that mind extension. Three times Rogers signed Signs, that extension, and, and he's got money on the table. Brady, Brady's done. Mentally, he's done. I'll say this: Rogers will quietly quit before Brady does. Is what I'm saying, like Bro. he may <laughs> already be retired m- mentally, sort of in his own little way, collecting those checks, you know, taking hits, and just. Instead of like trying to break a tackle, he's like, nah, I'll just lay down on this one, make sure you know. Mm-hmm. I see that happening more than TB. But which the maybe- opposite, the opposite happened this week. TB is still laying down when the pressure comes. I saw Rogers break a couple of tackles. It, 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 he wasn't he's younger, stronger. He but, wasn't you know. a tr- by what four years. <laughs> neither one of them fuck. though. Neither but one yet, of them though. Both are, their arms, are, both their arms are kind of uh, not what they were, and it's really showing. They've well, had they, these issues before. The the Packers have had these issues where they've had gotten off to slow starts, and he's more trust the process. We got this. We'll figure it out. Yeah, he's um, he's not doing that this that year. Now. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's more. He's, like, we need to change the whole offense. We should be running a West Coast offense, basically throwing the coach under the bus. And then, um, what was it uh, against the Giants when they went for it on fourth down and he tried to force a pass? Both Dylan and Jones were like, we could have run that. Either one of us would have gotten that first down. So there's definitely a lot of things they need to figure out as a team. All right. Um, so now so get yeah, to the uh... more more disappointed in the Packers. The Buccaneers not surprised with what's going on there. Let's get to how happy you guys must be with your big victory in Kansas City. Josh Allen, first quarterback to beat Patrick Mahomes at home twice. Um. Again, that was the second game. I was in the middle of the Yankee game. Very invested in that. So I was kind of, you know, back and forth. I didn't get to see much of it, but I figured it was going to be a a back and, you know, a a fourth quarter, who's got the ball last drive situation, and it ended up doing that. And this time, the defense stepped up. I mean, obviously, Josh Allen did what he was supposed to do and always does now. He's money. I mean, I, there's no other quarterback I would hand the ball to with four minutes, two minutes, eight minutes. There's no one else. Josh Allen is – there is no one even close to him right now. There is no quarterback that – Patrick Mahomes is an electric quarterback. He is – he. it's one and two. It's not one and one A. It's not even one and a half. It's two. He is – Lights out above everybody else. He used to make the mistakes. He doesn't anymore. 
he do, he has he he has the ability to know where to throw the ball and the god given physical talent to put it wherever the fuck he wants to. And so, to watch those two guys battle for the next how many years is going to be fucking great. They're both unbelievable quarterbacks, but Josh Allen right now there is no competition. There is no one better than him. There he's is no the, one that he's the Ricky Bobby of the NFL. He, he refuses is, to lose. He's either going to completely crash his car or he's going to come in first. Yeah, there is no – if you lose the game, it's not because of Josh Allen. And there's almost no one else you can say that about in the NFL. Uh, but something poetic on that final drive where Mahomes threw the interception to seal the game, uh, from the time they got possession of the ball to the interception, 13 seconds went off the clock. Exactly. Okay. So we can put that to bed. I don't know what that means. We but- lost – last year because we couldn't hold the chiefs for 13 seconds in the divisional game. Oh, they marched up the field, kicked a field goal. So, well, look, that being said, we still have to do it in the playoffs. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately for you guys, I think you guys, every playoff game is going to go through Buffalo, which is a tremendous advantage for you. So, yeah. Which by the way, we play the chiefs again next year in the regular season and the games in Kansas city. Can you explain to me? How do you know that? It's it's how the NFL does the schedule. They but, know, but but three wait, wait, years, how do you know three that? years in a row, we've had to play. Yeah, how in is Kansas that possible? City. I thought you had a sh- doesn't. De- wait a minute. How is that possible? How is that possible? Because if if we oh. we would play we play the AFC West and then we play a whole NFC division and then you alternate. So if you played, so whenever the AFC East played the West last time, it the Chiefs must have played in Buffalo. So this time, yeah, but yeah, but think about this though. That means the last two this year and last year, it was just a non-conference scheduled game, like one of those weird. Like, how are they? They did it. Then either they, you know, dude, there's no way the Giants have not played any team on the road three years in a row that wasn't in their fucking division. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit bogus, but I mean, look, everybody wants to see it. I'm not complaining. It's just a tough game. You know, it's like it'd be nice to have it in Buffalo and let Mahomes deal with our crowd for once instead of, uh, you know, us well, having th- to deal with the TikToks. I, I think the one time it was in Buffalo was COVID, so there's nobody in the stands. So this time, when they play them, oh. it will be in KC. They alternate. I know it's fucked up and it doesn't seem. Dude, fair, it is but... fucked up. It doesn't. It's not. But I understand why they're doing it. They want. I mean, everybody wants to see that game, but sometimes it was know, the it, highest it rated. Uh, yeah, it was the highest rate. It was like twenty-five million viewers or something for a week six game in a long time. There are four good football teams, and it was a very good game, <laughs> right? And there are two of them. There are four: the Eagles, those two, and who's the fourth one? I mean, um, maybe I don't even know. There's three good football teams. No, there's there's I, definitely. I, you Name make, another team that any, that can beat any other team. I'll not, say the, the rest of the league could just beat gonna, itself. I'm not going to say the Giants. Um, no, the Giants can be beat by any normal team. The, the Bengals are close to being six and zero. They've lost like every game by three points. Yeah, okay. the Bengals. Have I would been take very the Bengals close. over. Yeah, maybe, but I'm not. They're not in the top three. There are three good football teams yeah. right now, and everybody else is like struggling to survive yeah there are various records within that you know there are upper middle class and lower middle class but they're all in the middle fucking class can't disagree. none of them are lighting the world on fire you know you're taking the giants over the bills you're taking the giants over the fucking chiefs yeah maybe just it pains yeah. me to say you're taking the giants <laughs> over the eagles come on you're gonna bet your house uh... the giants over the eagles tomorrow Come on, dude. Uh, After what they did this weekend, they didn't look unstoppable, but they did look really fucking good. Yeah, I so I when I watched that game, I was uh defense scares very I was very impressed again with um Saquon and, and just I like them mixing in that wildcat, but uh you got very lucky. Um, and I think it was in the third quarter. Mark Andrews was just on a run of he had like seven or eight catches and every single one had gone for a first down and um, Lamar Jackson put it right on him in the end zone and he just dropped the ball and they had to settle for a field goal that drive. And if they had scored a touchdown, they would have gone up by two scores instead of just one with the field goal. Uh, it would have been, I think, 13 points or 10 points instead of six points. And I think that really, you know, the mentality for the Giants to only be down one score 
versus two in the third quarter. I think that really uh, shifted the whole game. And Andrews had it like it was right in his hands. Yeah. I mean, look, they they have not, you know, we haven't blown anybody out. Our wins have been fucking, you know, chewing your fingernails off. Yeah. Um, Jackson, my oldest, just traded uh, Cooper Cup for Saquon. Oh, God. No. Yeah. Everybody's as, on the same. As one. Cooper like- Cup goes off, don't say I like that. Hey, I just traded Cooper Cup for Stefan Diggs, so I yeah, can't. Yeah, but that. you're trading a one A for a one B. He's trading a running back who has the potential to get hurt with the guy who is far and away the number one player in fantasy. I mean, they have a bad game, and the guy still has twenty points. The Rams aren't quite at the Broncos level, but they're hard to watch. It's because they have no offensive yeah, line. That's why we didn't buy and tickets. The the whole Cam Akers thing. Uh, is is interesting yeah so cam Akers, if he isn't traded it's going to be tough for him to get back into the lineup i hopefully they find him a new home but um i think it's partly mcveigh has an ego and partly Akers has an ego and Akers thinks he's still the same guy before his injury and he isn't i mean well, he, he had he's looked like garbage he doesn't have his burst i, I mean think too cam Akers is the ram's highest draft pick in like four years yeah, because they they don't they never have first round picks, so they obviously believed a lot of them when they took him, and McVay was there when they took him. Yeah, I mean, if they hadn't gotten that Super Bowl, that would have been arguably one of the worst trades in the last probably 15, 20 years of football. To but, to give up to give up two firsts and a second and a quarterback who's basically the same guy as Stafford and Jared Goff, and to just get Stafford back. Like if they hadn't won that Super Bowl, they'd be in really bad shape right now. By the a way, a lot of trade, people would be fired. Trade deadlines in two weeks. Is it really? Yeah. yeah so really the, Pan- the Panthers turned down our trade to try to get CMC. Um, um, does that mean Odell Beckham has to sign with a team before no. then, or can he? No, because he's a free agent. Yeah, he could he could it. show up in the first week of the playoffs with somebody. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for us, Saquon Barkley's value goes up every week. But like the more like, he, we can't trade him. He's no. untradeable now. Now can, that you have can, a winning can, record, you have to keep rolling with it. I mean, we can see what happens. Not easily, but like you should win this week against the Jaguars. You, sh- I think you, you should. You should beat Indianapolis. Is playing shitty. You should beat Houston. You should beat fucking. Um, we got a couple. Uh, the Commanders twice. Taylor you Heineke know? time, baby. By the way, are you? Did you all follow the uh, owners' meetings this week? Yeah. What did uh, Robert Kraft's? Uh, they got into a fight. Him and Jerry. Yeah, Jones, him right? and Jerry Jones about Roger Goodell's how much they pay him. Yeah, I think the owner, <laughs> the ownership vote was like thirty-one to one, and Jerry mm-hmm. Jones was the one, obviously, that didn't vote. Dude, um, he's still pissed about Zeke's suspension. I swear to God. Remember that. Mm-hmm. No, what was Zeke's suspension for? His hair? <laughs> what was Zeke, what did Zeke? No, it was uh he had an incident with a college girl during spring break. And even though he wasn't charged with anything criminally, it was like a bad PR look for the league. And so they suspended him. I think oh, was it really? four, ga- four games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is it? Was it his rookie year? This is like a few years ago. It was I think I think his second year. Yeah, I think second year. Oh, so it came out later and then they suspended him? Mm-hmm. I don't remember yeah. that, but it was yeah. like oh, nothing, sure. nothing charged against him. It was just kind of like, uh, oh, the media is saying that bad things could have happened, but they apparently didn't. And so he suspended just because of the bad, bad airtime. But the other note from the owners meeting, I don't know if you caught this, was Jim Ursay was the first owner to say, take the team away from Daniel Snyder. He publicly yeah, why said not? It. He's probably on, you know pills when he said it too you know he's, he's got a <laughs> former drug addict he's got you know he's got a, he's right with god now so he's gonna say what he believes mm-hmm. um yeah well i mean why what are they gonna these guys always turn on each other they go with you know the popular opinion well Unless, but to be the first one to say it i think we'll we'll start a cascade movement where eventually the i the commodores will be for sale mm-hmm Maybe owned by Jeff Bezos. We'll see. Oh no! Really? Is he like first in line? Do you have to find a buyer before they could like? Is Wait, that what it is? The, like, do you call them the Commodores? Yeah, I don't call them the Commanders. Yeah, the, it's a stupid <laughs> name. Heineke and the Commodores. <laughs> um, 
I, I yeah. I bet you it's a thing where they're like, well, who's gonna who are we getting into bed with before we get rid of this guy? You know what I'm saying? Like they got they probably already know who is in line to buy it, who they would accept. They have to know all that. They, I, there's no mm-hmm. way they go, all right, it's for sale, and then let's see who wants to buy it. You know, like who's gonna be one of us now? Um, there already has to be someone in play. You know, they're not fucking they're not they're not gonna let that whole just go to anyone. So they must have their hand selected their their person to take over. Maybe it's Bezos, maybe it's somebody else, but I'm sure you know. Daniel Schneider, it, it really never was like he was never like beloved at any point. He was like a they hated him from the very, very beginning. From the very beginning. Right? I don't remember any time where he was like beloved in Washington. They didn't have any success under him. No, but he always spent a lot of money. Yeah, but for, for what? For you know, like they didn't even they weren't even like a contender. Yeah. I'm trying to think the last time. Any, you know, either the Redskins or the Commanders made it to the NFC Championship game. Has to be over 15 years, right? Oh, yeah. It's, Maybe it's 20. been over 20. That's but like the, he, he, you know? the thing is, is, is Daniel Snyder has a lot of dirt on the league. So if they were to... Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. So they must be like, all right, well, if Ur- Ursa is probably like, look, everyone knows my dirt. <laughs> so... I'll be the, you know, like I'll, I really, I'll be the first one to say, like, hey, this guy's got to go because what is he going to turn on me? Yeah. Okay. Everyone knows what I've done. So, yeah. That'd be great. I would yeah. love if Daniel, I mean, I don't want someone great going in there and buying it because then, you know, they're going to turn that team around to become contenders. But, well, and the other note is that the owners voted to not discuss um, roughing the passer this year. I know to that not was, discuss it? Yeah, I think they're just going to, for the rest of the season, tie it till next year. I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, once you start now, because you're you're, you're fuck with the competition process now. You're going to call pe- something a penalty next week that it wasn't called week one versus week one. You know, now you're, like, fucking with the outcomes of games and shit, dude. You know how, like, golf courses, like, you play around and everyone has to putt at the same hole for that round? Like, if after three holes they were like, ah, we don't like where this hole is, we're gonna move it over here. It's like it, you know. Oh, I had a, I was, I had a putt at that hole. <laughs> so they, yeah, I understand why they can't fuck around with the rule now. They got to keep it the way it is for the season right now. Mm-hmm. But definitely look at it in the off season. And like we said, dude, there's no way that you can't come up with a system where you have three different people. Just hire four, five, ten times more video operators and that's what you need you don't need guys on the ground with the fucking stripes on you need people in the sky who are who are looking at the shit the way we're looking at and it. immediately every play just replay real quick okay hey we got a penalty hey you got to do this oh you threw, you didn't throw a flag you should have thrown a flag oh you threw a flag it shouldn't be a flag or fuck it dude here's how you got become invincible dude ready for this Everyone, 30 seconds, America votes. Pull out your phone, Twitter, right? Penalty or not <laughs> no. penalty. Boom. That's no. it. He already wins. Now nobody no. can bitch. That's how I would do it. I mean, that Try Josh, that out. That Josh Allen tripping call had me pretty incensed. That I don't was know if you saw him. Just blatantly no. bad. He got called for tripping? Or so no. Jones, no, Jones, who shouldn't have been called for roughing the pass of the previous week, blatantly stretch his foot out to kick his shin and uh and josh, josh Allen's. yeah and josh was just livid after the play at the ref like he's trying to trip me and the ref's just going no and then they show the replay and then i forget who was calling our game was it tony romo and and yeah. uh yeah and just like oh that was that was bad I mean, good yeah. I mean, it was third down, fourth quarter. I thought that that would. It was. Have... It it wasn't. It didn't kill us, but that was uh, that was a drive that if the Bills had been able to score, it maybe it wasn't as close of a game as it ended up being. Because um, it was just a really bad for as much as they're protecting certain quarterbacks. I mean, we've watched Josh get kicked now three times, and it hasn't been called this season. Uh, his nuts have been grabbed, and it wasn't called. <laughs> so. Well, that was you, Brenton. That's the the whole city of Buffalo. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like you guys got to figure this out and be consistent. I would yeah, rather well, I would rather you just if you're not going to call that, just don't call a lot of the stuff that you are calling. 
Um, I would, yeah, I would not want to be going after the quarterback right now if I was a defensive lineman because, you know, I don't know what's what pushing, not pushing. I'm just going for the ball. Yeah, I'm trying to That's think. That's what I would do. There was a Go game. For the ball. I don't remember which game now, and I feel dumb because I was like, I got to remember this to talk about it. But there was a game, maybe it was Geno Smith, maybe it was Jalen Hurts. Somebody was scrambling, and they kind of got wrapped up by two defensive linemen. And, you know, obviously they could have taken the guy and just power slammed him and it would have been a sack, but because they kind of just gently wrapped him up, he was able to throw the ball to his running back. And instead of it being a sack, it went for, you know, 12, 13 yards. And it's really hard to play defense right now. What if we find out, just hear me out, defensive coordinator, which quarterbacks are ticklish, right? Let's just say we know Tom Brady doesn't like those little fucking ribs. You know, now I'm going at him and I'm getting in here fucking tight, getting in that little tickle zone. And he's, oh, the ball comes out right now. Hey, he's definitely, come on now. he's definitely, if you're open mouth, kissing or right in son, here, you know, like a lot of people don't like this one. I'm getting right in here. Yeah. And then next thing you know, or yeah. God forbid, I can get under those pits getting there. All right. Let's get to fucking picks, please. For the love of Christ. Okay. Okay. And we didn't even way, talk about oh, Josh Allen's leap. Let me do this before because I, I don't want to forget. Port Charlotte, Florida is on after back, much back and forth. They, they have enough going on at the club that they're able to do shows this weekend. So tomorrow, or depending on when you're getting this right now, probably be today. Might be next week. Friday, the 21st. I'll be doing two shows if you're in the Port Charlotte area. Two shows on Friday, two shows on Saturday. So, again, they are back on. Uh, Vasani's is open. A little bit, of, you know, obviously they have some stuff going on, but we're going to have fun this weekend. So tickets are at steverenazizi.com. Okay. Um, like I said, I've got passion for several games this weekend. You I hate my... this. I hate this slate. I think you this can ha- sucks. Oh, you mean the slate of games? Yeah. Okay. From a better betting perspective, I, I absolutely hate it. I think the lines are really good and i don't like looking at any of them there's uh i don't want to just keep riding the chiefs but that's the only game i have a lot of confidence in because of the 49ers being banged up i think if bose is out again the chiefs are gonna do way better than minus two and a half i thought the same thing even on the road they're not gonna lose two games in a row no Patrick mahomes will find a way to win that game and they're only giving up two and a half, so they got to win by three I points mean, at least. Trent Williams is out for the Niners. Bosa, who knows if he's not in? I mean, no pass rush. Um, they're not going to be able to block the Chiefs on offense. Like it's just you watch the 49ers last week. They couldn't run the ball against the Atlanta Falcons without Trent Williams. It was really bad, and the Falcons aren't like a shutdown team. So I. That's the only game I have the utmost confidence in. I also like the Chargers to cover at home against the Seahawks, but I like the Chiefs more on the road. All right. So Chiefs on the road, you want to give the two and a half, right? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Giving two and a half. We all agree on this, so it probably won't go through. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got, Lucas, yeah. go for I, it. I got a few games here. Okay. Uh, what do you think of Packers five and a half over the Commanders? I don't love it. You don't? I don't love it. Um, I mean, we just talked about the problems that Green Bay has. And while they should win that game, there's something about, even though I know Wentz is a better quarterback physically than Heineke, there's something about Heineke coming in and all of a sudden you might start seeing um, Terry McLaurin get the ball more and the commanders moving the ball down the field. So it, it could end up being a very competitive game. Um, even though the commanders don't have a pass rush and their defense can't stop the pass. I think, uh, you know, you're watching two bad teams struggling to figure themselves out. And I I think it could be closer and possibly could be an upset, but I agree. I'm I'm wrong most of the time. I agree with you, Lucas. I think Aaron Rodgers has a fuck this. I got to figure this thing out on my own game. And can, and this is the commander's week to get their fucking asses kicked. So I think it could go that way, but Mr. Captain Rain on my parade over here, you know, <laughs> you want to throw out another game so we can shit all yeah, over that yeah, one too? It, the rumor I keep seeing too is Ch- Chase Claypool to the Packers. I don't know if y'all. Ooh. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, yeah. I think even for Pittsburgh, if they get a good amount back, because they've, I think Pittsburgh's got a decent receiving core. Claypool's pretty good. Pickens is good. 
You know, I mean, they just got to figure out what their quarterback situation is. I think they might know it, well, but you know, they've doubled down on uh, Kenny Pickett is starting if he's healthy. Yeah, so that, but, that's done. And Mitch Trubisky was fine, but he didn't look great even when he came back in. If the Packers win two games in a row, and next thing you know, they're like, all right, we can make the playoffs, and we're missing some pieces, and this is one of them. They might have to overpay, and obviously, the Steelers aren't going to. They're not making waves this year, so why not get some equity for? Yeah, a, a, I don't. I don't know if they'll make that move. It seems. Oh fuck somewhat you, lateral. Brandon. Watson's going to come back. Christ. Dubs is is playing pretty decent for a rookie, and and I think him and Lazard are developing chemistry. Mm-hmm. And Tunyon, Tunyon had a good game. Yeah, Tunyon, Lazard better. I mean, I want him catching the ball like Cooper Cup every week. Yeah, that's he the, should. That's what I, I, I don't I was know why yeah. Rodgers isn't isn't looking his way more. But That's when he Jackson does, traded. yeah, when he does, he catches it. So. He traded Cooper Cup because um, he had, it, not that he's going to replace Lazard with Cooper Cup, but Saquon Barkley and Lazard. Don't oh, give me the so fucking dumb. hands over your. You're dumb. All right. That's, that's my son we're talking about. Yeah, your son's um, dumb. Here we go. Go ahead, Brent, uh, Lucas. I want to hear oh, your other hey, game. Here's the other game uh, Bengals over Falcons. I have it at Falcons plus six. I think the Bengals win. I have it at six and a half, but I can buy down to six if you want me to buy down to six. No, I'm comfortable six and a half. I like Bengals at home. Yeah, I like that game more. The Bengals are coming on. Give me the Bengals. But uh, which which one would you guys prefer? Or which one would you prefer, Lucas? You want the Bengals? Yeah, I want the Bengals. I want the Bengals. I don't want to trust Aaron Rodgers. I, I I agree with Steve. I think he's quiet quitting this whole season. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been quiet quitting for three. Quietly seasons. quitting. <laughs> um, my turn. My turn. Oh God, All here right. we go. No, I'm going to let you two boys decide between two games. You have the Jets or the Giants to choose from. What? They're both going to win this week. Which one do you more believe in? Do you believe in the Giants beating Jacksonville and giving three points, or getting three points, or do you believe the Jets? Where's Jets? Uh, plus one and a half against Denver. Yeah. Uh, and fuck your one and a half. Take them on the money line, you pussies. Give me the, give me the Jets. I was going to say the Giants. Me too. All right. <laughs> Let's fucking go, guys. And you want the Giants on the money line? On the goddamn money. You could take your three and a half and shove them up your ass. If fucking Trevor Lawrence beats us, we just beat Aaron Rodgers. We just beat Lamar Jackson, okay? We can beat fucking Trevor Lawrence. I'll tell you that. We can beat them. And God willing, everybody stays healthy. We're going to be at, close at the end of the game, and we've won those games. So we're going to win this fucking game too. And you could suck on it, Brenton. And don't give me your smirk or your bullshit. And I don't want to hear about all your fucking side bets next week, how you won a billion dollars betting against what we thought about on this podcast. I don't want to hear it anymore. I was talked off the top. I said on this podcast to take the Steelers and the points, and you wouldn't. You guys refused. You wanted to make merch mocking me, and you refused to see what I'm seeing, and now everyone's seeing it. Oh, fuck you, dude. The Panthers are going to cover against the Bucs this week. It's 11 points. I mean, that's a big – eleven. It was uh, nine and a half for the Steelers. I don't know. I have my feelings about the Giants and the Jets. That's the games that I believe in, and those are the games I'm going with. What does that get us? What does that net us? Uh, $50 is going to get us. uh, By the way, that's the Giants on the money line, the Bengals minus six and a half, the Chiefs minus two and a half. $50 will get us $387 and 40 cents. Possibly our biggest for a three-game parlay. Oh, what the hell? A line has changed. How does a line change? Oh, because they're fucking... hearing us. Jesus we Christ. We fucking lines with our knowledge. How do we do this every week? Which line changed? The Giants, right? I don't know. It was the Giants, what I the... bet, because everybody knows what uh, I know. This let's see. The Giants, real. let's see. Six and a half, two and a half. Nothing changed. That, that, Betsy Asai, fix, fix your shit. I just hit confirm again. Together, I hit confirm side. again, and it just went through. So whatever. Right. Now we bet it twice. Fucking idiots. We'll lose twice. <laughs> um, you guys have anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you wanted to add? I'm trying to think of. Uh, I mean, the fucking Nets oh, started um, last night. Kyrie. I've, I've enjoyed uh, basketball so far. Bigfoot was courtside at the uh, Timberwolves game. Who? Bigfoot. 
You know, Who's big, 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 hairy ape man lives he in was, the woods. He was spotted. He was spotted courtside. He's a Timberwolves fan. What does that fan. mean? He was sitting courtside. Some, what do you want? Some guy dressed up in a big, big foot outfit. Yeah. And, and they and, let him, him sit and courtside. Him and Dalvin Cook are BFFs. Yeah, I what got does it that right, mean, Brenton? I, I got it right here for you, Steve. Share the screen. I want to see what this looks like. <laughs> Bigfoot, as you know, big NBA fan, took his friend oh, Delvin Cook on, to the basketball dude. game. Are you fucking kidding me? And they me? sat courtside. This is – what and is it, happening? And it motivated Rudy Gobert, and he had a great game, and the Timberwolves won game one. Oh, my God. You know what? Between this fucking guy and the guy at the Yankee game of the day in, in Cleveland wearing the Joker mask behind – did you see that? Yeah, it that was, was behind the, in the in the, in the right-hand batter's box camera angle. And it wasn't even like the nice Joker. It was like an evil. It was more the creepy evil, one. It was yeah, the fucking even more evil than anything uh, they Heath put Ledger in the movie. One. It was worse than the Heath Ledger one. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. I'm sorry, but you show up in a jo- in a fucking Bigfoot costume. You are not sitting in the front row. You're not sitting inside, dude. This is not Halloween. That guy paid 10K to sit there and sweat his ass off and not get to eat, drink beverages and foods and not piss for three hours. Where does this end, dude? Where does this end? Where are you going to, where are you going to end this? So I can't, can I wear my Proud Boys t-shirt and, 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 and camera well, angle, whatever, you know, it's like. I mean, don't, don't out yourself on the podcast that you're a white supremacist. I'm just saying. If you're dressed as Bigfoot, you can. Yeah. By the way, hey, you know the is, Kanye White Life Matters t-shirts they're making? They're giving them out to Skid Row people on, in downtown LA. Of course they are. So if you want a limited edition Kanye. Uh, that's You know what? That's the most LA fucking thing in the world. They're probably $500 a t-shirt. And LA is like, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to spend our money and buy those t-shirts and give them to homeless people to send Kanye a message. Meanwhile, they're probably spending $50 million on fucking t-shirts for the homeless people instead of p- building them fucking actual homes. Yeah. That that's that's LA. We'll show them. We'll give them money. Fucking well, cunts. In our defense, we are showing them, Steve. Brent, did you just do a hair toss at the end of that to to punctuate what you just said? We are right. showing them ladies and gentlemen you've been listening to the sloppiest podcast in the history of mankind there's no one producing this or editing this or oh actually jay smook is doing our, us a big favor and putting it together and putting yes, thank you on. jake we have no we, we've fallen off the we have no emma we have no guiding force so this <laughs> is us this is who we are uh thank you for listening though and people seem to like it and they enjoy it and they write me and they tell me get a new episode out. i'm like dude i some guy wrote like on thursdays or friday last week get a new episode out i'm like we just did one on wednesday what what am i two bears one cave i do have uh some cool news um from atc uh so this monday night we're all going to watch the manning cast uh, because the Bears Patriots game will have a special guest, Bill Burr, joining the Mannings, and they're going to broadcast it. Bill's going to be in the ATC studio. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Are they? Um, are they? Is he do, does he know what quarter he's doing? I don't know what quarter he's doing. But gotta be the first half, dude. The second half, I'm tired by the second half. <laughs> I'm real tired. Steve, did you watch? Oh, I fell asleep. I mean, it is going to probably be a pretty <laughs> boring game. Who is it? It's the Patriots and the Bears. Ugh. So it's just going to be the Patriots running down the Bears' throat for four quarters. Um, but the in- interesting little uh, sidebar, uh, Belichick is not committed to having Mac Jones come back and be the starter once he's healthy. So now, what? He's, could be he's him playing free to make games, his own choice. But, yeah, yeah, he is. But uh, Zappi has played you know, as good as you would want someone in that offense to play. Mac Jones hasn't won that job where it's like, this is my fucking job. You know, he was mediocre. handed the playoffs. Yeah, he's been he's been mediocre. Last year. And he was he was a pro bowler because six other guys in front of him said no, and it was like last man standing. I didn't even know he was a pro bowler. He was a yeah. pro bowler last year. Yeah, that's they're thank God. But it was away with it that. was literally six guys in front of him that said no. The pro bowlers are, by the way, playing flag football this year. Do you know that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think that's uh, what that means. Peyton was it Peyton Manning? Somebody's in charge of putting together like three days of skill competitions, and that's going to be the the whole thing. Dumb. Yeah. Have them have. I want them to have a party, like a fucking yeah. Just like have a, a dinner. 
Just have a dinner. No, no, no. I and I want to tell them, like I want them to like do what they want to do, like have like a chicks coming over to like a, a fuck festival party. Like, like a, let's a celebrate boat. our accomplishments. Steve, why do you gotta like, take it to that place? This is a family. You know when athletes get together to sport. celebrate their accomplishments? That's what I want to see televised. Give me two hours of that on Netflix. The debauchery. You that want goes on you want an HBO in inside Vegas hotel room. inside the Olympic yes. Village. This is oh, what the oh, Olympics the actually is. Fuck a flag football game. I want to see what cheetahs, the staff of cheetahs, when they are brought into Deshaun Watson's hotel room, the things that go on there. Okay. Let us not so. forget the Minnesota Vikings love boat. Yeah, that's true. And the Giants had a little love boat situation when they took a week off and went down to Miami with Odell Beckham the first year oh, he was there right. making the playoffs. Right. So, yeah, maybe rent a boat and let's see the debauchery on that. But I don't give a fuck about a flag football game. And if I play tackle football my entire season career and season busted my ass to make a pro bowl team i'm not showing up to play flag fucking football that's the podcast uh thank you for listening uh we'll be back next week with more cutting views on all all of today's hottest topics uh thank you for listening rating subscribing telling people and uh we appreciate it and uh we love you for it and let's go yankees and they better fucking win. They better. You do not want to see me here next week if they don't play better than they did. Uh, you do not. And the decision making process is not better. Heads will roll. Capiche? Got it. All right. The Amazon guy's here. I got to go. He's going to ring the doorbell. I love you guys. Peace out. Go, go Bills. Bills. Thank you very much for joining me. How you, How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. welcome back, welcome back, 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 Steve Ranazizi. I'm the guy.